Reporting in progress. All right, welcome back to another session of Practice to Perfect. And today we're going to talk about open houses, right? And if we were to open up one of my favorite books, the Shift book, right? What we're going to see is when we start doubling down on a lot of different tactics. And the tactic is open houses. And so if we were to start it off, it says, don't diss open houses. They are an opportunity to be where the buyer is and holding one is targeted to your haven't met database, right? To that haven't met marketing piece. And it says, open houses remain a tried and true method of lead generation when done properly. So when we say that, right? When we think about when done properly, what do we think that that means? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So the very first thing is like, let's, let's show up prepared. Let's know how many bedrooms, let's know the bath count. Let's know, um, the school district, the taxes, all that fun stuff. Absolutely. I like that. What else do we think is important when we start thinking about being prepared for the open house? Knowing the neighborhood. Yeah. Knowing the neighborhood. Yeah. There's, you know, three or four other houses. This is what they went for all those different pieces, right? Like, there is no wrong answer to this when we start thinking about being prepared, right? Because we go into this thing and when I start thinking about an open house, there's a lot of time that goes into this, right? We're going through and we're finding the open house. Then we're going through and we are identifying the hours that we're gonna be there. We have to put up signs. We have, we're taking two, three hours out of our day. We have to clean up, we have to follow up. So there's a lot of different pieces that we wanna strategize out there so that we make the most out of it. And then it says this, here are some few tips and we'll talk about this as we go, right? It says a few additional tips are place a minimum of eight directional signs, more if the house is several turns away from the main street. And it says your pro tip is there is no such thing as to too many directional signs. This is the thing guys, like we need multiple pieces of collateral out there marketing pieces that say open house this way because there's going to be people that yes they're going on zillow they're going on realtor.com they're going on your websites and they are finding the open house and they're coming to it and then there's going to be neighbors and the neighbors are doing their thing and they see the open flag or the open house or you did some door knocking and you told them and then there's just people that are driving through that yes they're in the market and they don't realize that one, two, three Main Street's on the on for sale. So they see your sign and they're following your sign all the way in because they don't even know the address. So we need to direct them to the house. It says, have a sign in sheet with a pen, including email address, phone address. Sometimes inserting two complete names on the sheet to prime the list makes your first visitor more comfortable, right? So it's saying this, it's saying, make sure to put in Barney Rubble and Fred Flintstone, right? In the beginning of your sheet. And I probably wouldn't use those names and to let people feel more comfortable as they're coming through. Why is this important? Why do we need to have a sign in sheet? So you can follow up with them, guys. Everyone, raise a hand if you got into real estate because you're a nonprofit and you're doing this for fun. Right? I didn't see any, I didn't see any hands get raised. So this is the thing, guys. We need to be very, very intentional when it comes to our lead generation. And like I said, open house takes many, many hours out of your Saturday, out of your Sunday. You might as well get something out of it. So I would do a forced registration. I want your name. I want your email. I want your phone number. And for numerous reasons, there, there's safety procedures in here. If something goes missing from the house, I want to know who's walking the house anyway um, so that I can report back to the seller. Like, okay, so I had these 20 people through. These are the, the names that we have. We can start following up. And it also gives you a reason to reach back out, right? They might have questions about it. Maybe they got in and out and you just want to follow up and figure out what their motivation was for coming through the open house to begin with. And it says, have a professional flyer of the open property 
and an additional flyer with other properties in the neighborhood that are currently available. I mean, think about that, right? We just talked about, let's be the local expert and let's say that 123 Main Street is open and also 125 and 127. And we can say that these are also the available homes for sale in the neighborhood. And then what does it look like to where, if you're setting something up to where you do sign a contract for them to go see, or you do go and preview the house and you're just raising their real estate IQ when it comes to these different pieces. Be ready with scripts for showing the home, scripts for sellers who live in the neighborhood, as well as closing scripts for buyers for consulting appointment to become, become their buyer's agent. Right? When we're going through here, guys, this is lead generation. We should be getting into the habit of having these conversations. Yes, let's capture their name, their phone number, their email for reasons to follow up with them. And we need to be prepared to have a conversation. And I think that's the biggest thing. And it's like, well, I don't want to be pushy. Guys, you're all in here to make money and we need to be having conversations. This is lead generation activities. And it says, ask questions. Follow up with an email at the end of the day and a phone call the next business day. Add your contacts to your database and continue to follow up with an 8x8. So that 8x8, right, is what we're doing is we're sending eight pieces of content out there to connect, right, to connect with that lead. This person is a lead. We didn't have a whole lot of conversations with them. We need to connect with them so they can see that we're adding value. And what does it look like? to send them the information of the house, right? Like here's my flyer again in a digital form, just in case you had any questions. What does it look like to send, this is the market data of the entire area. So, hey, you, you came into 123 Main Street, obviously you're interested in it, and it, here's all the info for what's happening in the neighborhood. What does it look like to send another uh, additional email or text or phone call and it says, hey, I know that you came into inter neighborhood X here, is there any other neighborhoods that I can get you some more information on that you'd be interested in, right? Because the more that we come from value, the more opportunity that we're going to have to connect with these people and for them to see us as the real estate economist of choice so they feel comfortable doing business with us. Any questions around that so far when we start thinking about the open houses and the value that we're providing? Cool. So then, right, when we start thinking about an open house and we think of seven levels, there are seven levels to an open house. And the first level is we put a sign in the yard, right? Like that's the only level that we do. We're dropping the sign in the yard and we talk about the, the, the three, the three uh, P's in real estate. We place the sign in the yard. We place it on the MLS and then we pray that it sells, right? Like that's what it looks like. And I know that the, the current market that we're in looks a little bit different, um, but that's what real estate traditionally used to look like. And then the level two is we have the sign in the yard and then we're actually putting balloons and riders out there, right? Like we're making it look, we're, we're putting out two, a lot of different items out there. So people are actually recognizing, yes, there's an open house and it's an event, come on in. The third piece is, is when we place those directional signs at all the key corners, right? So when we start talking about that first pro tip and we're putting out like the eight directional arrows and those different pieces, that actually takes it to the third level. We have our sign, we're making it look like an event and then we are directing traffic into our open house. The fourth level looks like this. It's the flyers the week before, the email invites, and post it on all the websites. I mean, think about this, guys. When we start taking Mindshare, and we're going through, and we have our newsletter, and for those that did not see the, uh, the video that our top agents did part of our ALC talking about the newsletters that they're doing and all those different pieces, like this is how the top agents are winning right now. They are taking massive Mindshare from their databases. So what does it look like to go through and knock on all the doors in the neighborhood and invite them to an exclusive neighbor open, right? Like I'm knocking on the door and I'm going to hold this open house for 30 minutes just for the neighbors to come through and see what the Joneses are doing. And then I'm going through and I'm going to email my entire database. This open house I'll be hosting next week. Would love it if you can come by. And then what does it look like? Social media, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, all these different pieces. 
TikTok, right? All these different pieces that we're going through and we're just providing massive value of this is what the neighborhood looks like. This is the open house. Here's your sneak peek. And like you're going in, you're, you're zooming into the kitchen or whatever that looks like. Then we go into that fifth level and it says, go invite the neighbors, right? We already created the flyers and all those different pieces. And then the, the neighbors, the neighbors are the big piece, right? Where we're going through and we're making the phone calls. And maybe we're doing the circle prospecting or we're going through and we're door knocking. Um, maybe we're sending out pieces of, of literature, whatever that looks like to take more mind share from the neighbors because the neighbors might get excited, right? The neighbors see that they bought their house for $200,000, $300,000 10, 15 years ago. And now their homes are selling for six, right? Like that's exciting. They're going to want to know what a $600,000 home looks like. And then they're going to go through and they're going to say, wow, my bathroom is better than that. My kitchen's better than that. We actually updated these different pieces. And then they're going to have some excitement and they're going to want to know what their home value is. When we get to that sixth level, the sixth level, we're going to get on our phone and we're going to remind everyone, right? Like we're actually going through and all the info that we collected, we're actually going to make the phone calls. Hey, just wanted to see if you'd be able to come to the event. Hey, just wanted to double check and see if you were you were planning on coming through. We have this going on. And we talked about at the team meeting the other day, what does it look like to enhance the event, especially around holidays, right? We have um, February 14th, Valentine's Day coming up. What does it look like to have a giveaway? What does it look like to have a dinner for two being raffled off to all the people that are coming to your open house? Like make it a reason for people to come restaurant week is coming up what does it look like to find out what restaurant has uh, a great deal coming up and you actually buy the the voucher or set the reservations and do whatever and whoever comes through that's their that's their prize right we need to be thinking about different ways to take more mind share to disrupt what is happening in the typical real estate arena and then the seventh level hold four open houses in the area in various price ranges. Guys, this is powerful, right? And when I tell you, and when we look at the seventh level, what do we think the value is to holding numerous open houses in the same neighborhood? Yes, great for whoever just said that, because I think I just heard it, right? The, the value is this. Think about the massive amount of mind share that you're going to take from people if they see that you just had four open houses in their neighborhood. I don't care if it's your neighbor, if it's your open house or someone else's, right? If we're going through, they don't care about the sign in the yard. If they're seeing your directional arrow every week and you're the one knocking on their door who do you think that they think is the real estate agent they're thinking it's you right so you're going through and they're going to say man this person sells a lot of real estate in my neighborhood you might not own any of the listings right and they're not differentiating that because they're seeing your face they're getting your literature you're the one knocking on their doors you're the one there every weekend so i think that it's imperative to pick a farm Right, all the biggest agents in the nation have a farm. And if we were to establish a farm and then we were to send out the mail outs, we do some door knocking, we're providing value to let them know how much their home's worth, and we're doing open houses, we are the real estate economist of choice at that point. And there is no way that they are going to associate anyone else in that neighborhood. What does it look like to also host the um, the yard sale, right? Like I'm the, the neighborhood yard sale person to where you're going through. That's also a door knock. It's another touch. Guys, there, there's a lot of power to geo farming and enhancing it with open houses and enhancing it with pop buys and different values from there. So we go through and here's your best practice success kit, right? That, that's on the screen and I will share it in the chat for anyone that wants it. And then what we will also do is I will print it off for you in the, in the classroom as well. So it says this, and the one thing Gary says, extraordinary results are directly determined by how narrow you can make your focus. Use these best practice to narrow your focus to get purposeful with open houses. What we know is this, that the top real estate agents in the nation 
the majority of their business comes from four sources uh, of lead generation. The biggest source is obviously sphere, friends, and referral. That's number one. And number two and number three are typically around a geographical farm, which I believe that this open house piece plays into because what we know is when we hold an open house, we should be able to get two pieces of business out of it, right? And if I own the open house, I'm gonna get the listing. Obviously I have the listing. And the second piece is buyers are gonna walk in. Buyers are calling off of the signs, all these different pieces. So the first one is to set the goal. And I think this is crucial, right? Because I, I know I've harped on this a couple times so far and you are spending hours of your week building up on this open house right and so don't just go there and show up and pray that something happens set goals set parameters i'm going to go through and i'm going to say that i am not leaving this open house without four viable leads right like i'm going to collect name phone number email right that's one of it number of buyers and sellers percentage of attendance right so go in it and say that i'm going to make sure that when i go to this open house that at least 15 20 people come through and if we were to look back on the, on the, the seven levels that are in the, uh, the shift book, we know that a piece of that is actually making the phone calls beforehand and doing some of those invites, right? Going on to social media, Instagram, TikTok, uh, Twitter, if you're into Twitter, um, and then going through and making sure that the invites are there. The second piece is the, the go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so you, you should start doing that like the week yeah, if you have the opportunity to know that you're going to be hosting that, that open house the week before, absolutely. I think a lot of things that are happening right now to maybe you only get like a day or two, right? Because I think that this is what the cycle looks like. Someone raises their hand, hey, I want to sell my house. And you might know hopefully the weekend before. And then it's, let me get, let's get in there. Let's get everything cleaned up. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we'll get photography in there. Thursday, we'll get it listed. Friday, or photo shot. Thursday night, Friday morning, we'll get it on the market. Friday, we'll let it sit. Saturday, Sunday, open houses. So there still should be some time to be able to, from the photography piece to the lead generation piece, as well as I think that you should be doing the video. Video is big right now. Right, video is huge to where we need to be going through and taking you know some quick shots of the, the video to in, invite people through or put it on my social media is just big mind share. But yes, I would say you probably have a week minimum. Okay. So then we're going through and it's it's the pick the open house, right? So I'm setting the goals for what I'm gonna do. Because this is the thing, guys, if you're gonna pick open houses for your lead generation sources. It has to be worth your time and energy because there is a lot of it that goes into this. So then you're gonna pick your house. What do you want? Do you wanna be known for million dollar homes? Do you wanna be known for $600,000 homes? Do you wanna be known for $300,000 homes? Do you wanna be known for all of it? Do you wanna be known for the person that's doing business in Arvada or in Westwoods, right? And you get super hyper-focused. And this is the thing, I don't know if there's a right or wrong answer. I would say this though, there's gonna be less people walking through a million dollar property. There's probably gonna be a lot of people walking through a $300,000 condo though, right? So just think about what your objective is. Are you looking for a lot of different names and a lot of different pieces and a lot of different activity to follow up with? Or are you looking to brand yourself as a certain type of person in a certain type of area? And there is no right or wrong. Just think about what your unique value proposition is. Think about your current database and think about what you're looking to do with that. And it says, consider homes that are available in your geographical farm, right? There's geographical farm again. They are actually layering this over to your geo farm, establishing a stronger brand recognition. Because like I said, if you're sending out mail outs, you're door knocking and you're continuously putting open house signs in, they're going to associate it with you and further establishing yourself as a local economist of choice. And then the staging piece, right? When we're thinking about if I own the listing, what is the staging piece gonna do, right? Open all the curtains and turn on all the lights, right? We're setting the stage here and we're going through and we're just making sure that it's light and it's bright and it's open. You know, it's, it's funny that it says close the close all the toilet seats. Like, that's the thing. I don't know if you guys are going through Zillow or the MLS and these different pieces and you're just like, why didn't they fix that? Right. And so we have to be cognizant as we're going through 
it, does everything look right? Are the toilet seats down? Are, are the, the things that need to be hidden underneath the cabinets hidden underneath the cabinets? Adjust the thermostat accordingly. Arrive in enough time to make sure that the temperature is comfortable. Guys, there are houses that aren't lived in, right? To where they go through and it's gotten muggy or they've gone through and they've just painted and the painter just finished and the paint fumes are out there. Like we have to go make sure that the environment is right and conducive to having conversations and in in establishing some of those relationships. And then ensure valuables are in a safe place. You guys want to make sure that the the drugs, like the, phar- the the pharmacy drugs are hidden, that there isn't firearms out, that there isn't any valuable items. I have literally had, um, I remember one time going over and, and listing a property and the, uh, the photography company showed up and we're going through and we're taking photos of, of the house and this is, it's being rented. So there's a renter in the house right now. And... The photographer says, hey, you guys might want to move this. And there is literally a handgun between the, um, between the mattress and the, and the box spring. And hey, you guys might want to move that for the pictures, right? Like the renter didn't see it. I didn't see it, right? And the photographer saw it because he was actually zooming in across the room and was like, that doesn't belong in the, photo- in, the, in the photo, right? So we just need to be making sure that it's staged and appropriate and safe for everyone. And then practice your scripts, right? I think this is the thing, like we're gonna go through there and we're gonna know what's gonna pop in, right? And maybe we're gonna get super hyper intelligent about the neighborhood. My script used to look like this. I would say, hey, what brought you in today? Was it the 10 foot open house flag that you saw or did Zillow bring you in? And this is the thing, I never asked them if they had a real estate agent. Because just like anything else that happens, say you're at a mall and you walk into a store and then what does the associate ask you? Can I help you find anything? What are you looking for today? And what is your answer every time? No, I'm just looking, right? Like that's the answer every time, no, I'm just looking. So if I ask someone if they have a real estate agent, you know what their answer is? Yes, I have a real estate agent. If you ask them something else, they'll correct you. Right. If you ask them, was it the open house sign or Zillow? They'll say, no, I actually found you on realtor.com or they'll say, no, my real estate agent sent me in. I never started off with real estate agents, though, because they're going to put their shield up right away and they're going to block me. No, we were just in the neighborhood. And then I know that, cool, I can have a conversation with this person and they might be a little bit more worth my time than someone says, no, my real estate agent sent me here. They weren't able to make it. So I'm walking the house by myself. Right. Because between those two people, I'm going to spend more time with the unrepresented buyer than I am with the the person that's agent was too busy to come hang out with them because they have a signed agency agreement. So practice what your scripts look like, figure out what your opening line is and then figure out what your follow up conversations are. Like if they're in a certain room, are you going to say, hey, did you notice this about the house? Right. Like pick your canned scripts and your canned answers and your uh, your canned questions for areas in the house. Hey, did you notice this? What do you think of this room? Could you imagine hosting the Super Bowl in this living room, right? Like whatever that looks like, just plan some of those pieces. And then the prepare the neighborhood stats, right? Like as you're going through, you wanna know how many homes are in the area? What's the average days on market? What is the average list price versus the average sold price? Just to give them some information and come from contribution. And then know like, hey, if you download my app, you'll actually be able to see these different houses. And they, or ask them, you know, how they're finding the houses. And you say, do you have a real estate app that you, that you use and trust? And they have no, be like, well, what's your cell phone? I'll just send you my, my app right now and you'll be able to use it and get up-to-date information, right? It's just these different pieces that we need to be thinking about. How can I get their name? How can I get their phone number? How can I get their email and provide them value? And then the biggest thing, right, is, is be safe. When we're going through here, we, we need to be extra safe. And it says self-defense class or tool, right? Whatever that tool is, whatever that self-defense class is, we need to be cognizant that we are probably in, a, in a, a big building by ourselves and someone walking in, do they have the best intentions or not? Most of the time they do. Most of the time it is a safe environment. And what if it isn't? 
What are we going to do? Are we walking through to where we make sure that the person's always walking in front of us, right? To where we're never leading in the room. If we're going down into the basement, that they're actually leading us down the basement and we're following behind them instead of the other way around. Use a smartphone safety app to track your whereabouts and alert someone in case of emergency. Guys, a lot of these things, even like HomeSnap, right? If we were to get on our phone in Colorado and HomeSnap's a nation company, so I'm assuming that they're on every one, there's actually a timer that you can set to where if you don't respond to someone in a certain amount of time, it sends off a alert to them to call the police or to check in on you. Right. So what does it look like to set that that phone app or even just to have the buddy system? Check all rooms and make sure several escape plans. Right. Like you're going through here and you'll hear all kinds of stories about people that go into houses and they have gone and walked into these different areas and people have like run out of the building on them. Right. To where they went into a vacant open house. They started getting ready for it and there was actually someone like a squatter or someone in the, in the room. So make sure that we're doing the, the walkthrough, making sure we're making a lot of noise and making sure that we know even our own escape plan. It says when showing a home, always walk behind the prospect, right? Never lead them and gesture for them to go in front of you. Park on the street, right? We want to make sure that everyone sees our car, make sure that our phone is charged. And obviously with everything going on in our world, the, the, the COVID-19 restrictions that we still have. Them. And then it says check with your market center for additional safety guidelines, right? For the most part, we do two in our office, right? In our market center, we make sure that we have two people um, and that is just a safety piece so that, that nothing bad happens. And then it stands out, host a speaker, right? Like who is going to be the speaker? Offer a gift. We just talked about the raffle, the open house scavenger hunt, which is which is kind of fun, right? Like turn these into events. You want to have a social media following on this. You want the neighborhood to know that you're the real estate economist of choice. Like we need different reasons for people to, to come into our open house. And for people, for buyers and to sellers want to know why they want to use us and then host the open house at a unique time. What does it look like to do the twilight, the afternoon, um, to where if we're in a school district, are we doing it at three o'clock to where all the parents doing pickup are seeing us, right? Or is it at the twilight where we're offering um, champagne or different pieces like this? Like we're just creating events. Like this is a lifestyle that we are providing for people. And then here's your pro tips, right? Like especially right now as we're going through, your phone charger, is there extra toilet paper, your measuring tape, paper towels, your business cards, your PPE, disinfectant, air fresheners, trash bags, pins. Like, do you have a tote that is in your car with all these different pieces? Maybe it's snacks, maybe it's crayons for the children, right? Like, what are we doing that we're carrying in our car to where we can actually set up and do business anywhere? And if anything is missing from the house, we actually have it. What are our thoughts so far, guys, when we start thinking about the, these open house pieces? All right. So then, guys, right, it says this. It says, successfully generating leads in any market is about understanding how to create effective offer response messages. This is about implementing effective lead generation methods to put your message in the path of your target audience, which is motivated buyers and sellers. And finally, it's about weighing the response and making necessary adjustments on ongoing basis to improve your results. So this is the thing, like we're gonna go out there and we're gonna fail forward, right? We're gonna go through, we're going to have a plan in place and then we need to retract our results. Did we get results by laying the check-in sheet up front and were people honored or honest about it and actually filled it out? Or do we need to be more purposeful and actually have the clipboard, hand it to people? I've seen one to where um, having the clipboard, that's your sign-in sheet, one per person. And then you actually had almost that scavenger hunt where you said, would you rate these different pieces through the house? And so they're walking through and you're actually having them engage to the house and give you the responses and hopefully their name, phone number and emails on there. And you gave them a reason to walk through and then maybe your prize is at the bottom. Once you turn this in as a thank you for filling this out for me, 
you're going to be entered into your $25 raffle, right? Whatever that looks like to actually get them to fill out the information and keep them engaged. And now that you know what your message needs to be, right? Because after we've done some exper uh, experiments with this and we failed forward a little bit, we need to make sure that we know our market and that we know what our lead generation methods are that we're going to use to start lead generating. So as we're going through, right, we're, we're going to set the signs. We're going to identify our property. We're going to door knock. We're going to invite the neighbors. We are going to host an open house event. And then we need massive, massive follow up. So you're eight by eight. What does that look like? What are the emails, the phone calls, the text messages, the smart plans we're going to put these people on because they might not be ready to transact today. 15 days later, 30 days later, two months, three months, six months later, we need to be able to follow up with them.